Google Chat GPT. It's amazing. You can do anything with it. Can you learn Bambara with it? Aoniche Audanse. My name is Coleman. I'm the teacher and linguist behind Ankata, my initiative for creating media and resources for speaking and learning. Monday. Are you new here? Think about subscribing. In this video, I want to test and see whether Chat GPT can be a useful tool for learning Bambara or related varieties like Jula or Maninka. So as you all know, everybody's going crazy about artificial intelligence and tools like ChatGPT, as well as other chatbots that can revolutionize all sorts of things in daily life. I'm a language teacher, so one of the things that I'm interested in is whether chatbots like ChatGPT, which will be the focus of this video, can actually be used for language learning. Putting aside the ways that AI might destroy the planet or ruin all forms of human existence, I'm interested in the ways that it might specifically be able to help us as being a sort of virtual language tutor. I think there's at least two ways that it can do this. First, because it responds to queries and questions, you can use it as an interactive language partner. Basically, it's a free conversation with somebody who will interact with you about any topic you want. Say you want to talk about something like, what is Bamako, the capital of Mali, like? You could put that in as a query and then you could potentially talk to ChatGPT in Bambara about that. Second, ChatGPT potentially can respond to direct questions about the language. For instance, you could ask it questions like, how do you say bird? Or you might even be able to ask it about specific grammatical concepts. For instance, can you explain how to use the present tense in Bambara? But here's the thing, does it work for Bambara or other less commonly taught languages? As we all know, ChatGPT is only as good as the data that it's scraped. So in this video, we're going to put it to the test and see whether ChatGPT actually has anything useful to say about Bambara in the context of trying to converse with it or ask it specific questions that a language learner might ask. Aosona, ankata. All right, so I'm now in the app. I'm using the web-based version of ChatGPT4, and it is August 24th, 2023, just to give some context of the version, since obviously these are always changing. So let's jump into things by starting off as if we were a naive beginner. All right, so potentially you need some information about the language. Hi, I want to learn Bumbra. All right, so here's our response to the query of I want to learn Bambara, and it says a few things. It says uh, alphabet and pronunciation. Okay, so it tells us a few things. Bambara uses a Latin script with additional characters. That's correct. Here are some basic phrases. Start with greetings like Inisogoma. So what's interesting here is it automatically doesn't use the standard spelling, which it even mentions earlier as having the additional characters. Though it does get Iniche correct using the actual standard spelling. Online resources. So there's a bunch of good stuff. What I really don't like about this is they didn't mention Ankata. So all the other tips here just going to be general things that you want to do for any language you would learn. All right, so not that useful. How do you say hello in Bambara? So let's just imagine we're a new student. We want to say hello. In Bambara, hello is Iniche, pronounced Iniche. All right, so that looks pretty good. How do you respond? To respond to Iniche in Bambara, you can say Iniche too, <laughs> which means hello to you too. All right, so that's wrong. We would need to respond with Mba and then say Iniche. Let's see if we try to correct uh, ChatGPT, what it would say. So do you, I have heard people respond with Mba. And so here it says, yes, you're correct. Mba, which they write with an apostrophe. You sometimes see people do this. It's not correct orthography, but they'll do it pronounced anba. So it's not anba, but unba. It's a common response to greetings in Bambara. It can be translated to yes, or I'm here. So when someone says iniche, responding with mba is akin to acknowledging with yes, or I'm here. All right, so that's a little bit better. How do you say my name is Coleman? In Bambara, my name is going to be Ntoko Kolman. All right, so here we see that uh, it doesn't use the correct orthography, so it should be Togo like that. And then it typically it'd be more useful to say Ntoko Ko Kolman, right? Or Ntoko Be Kolman. Ntoko Kolman, it's possible, it's more close to kind of a Maninka pronunciation. What about, <clears throat> what is your last name? 
So these are just some common questions you might ask. In Bambra, what is your last name? Can be translated as Kone Famenite. All right, so that is 100% wrong. It has nothing to do with what is your last name. So what happens if we ask, uh, how do you count to 10? All right, so it did get Kelim Fila Sabanani Duru Woro. So there's a spelling mistakes on Nani. It's supposed to be with an extra A. Woro Wolon Fla. Wolo Wara Saba, okay, that's wrong. I don't know where they got that. And Wolo Nang, that's wrong. But Teng is correct. So it got seven or eight out of ten of the words. It only got two of them wrong. How do you say goodbye? In Bambra, goodbye is Kambe, pronounced Kambe. All right, that looks pretty good. What happens if we ask them a kind of beginner's question? Imagine you're a beginner and you knew that benedictions were used. You might ask about it. Here it hasn't said anything about benedictions, but let's say, what is the role of benedictions when saying goodbye? So this isn't the best question because only a teacher would ask this, but let's check nonetheless. Wow, so very long response. Benedictions play an important role in the Bambara. That's always weird when they say in the Bambara culture. So in Bambara culture, when saying goodbye, instead of just simply goodbye, it's customary to offer a series of well wishes or blessings for the person's journey, health, family, or business. These benedictions reflect the close-knit nature of the community, blah, blah, blah. Wow, all right, so it did kind of get the message right. I wonder where it's scraping that from. How do you say, how are you? In Bambara, how are you is Ika kene. All right, so that's kind of sometimes used to say the equivalent of how are you, like where in American English we would say, how are you? You could say Ika kene, but this actually means, are you healthy? So let's see if we were a curious student and you wanted to ask ChatGPT or our tutor, what does that actually mean? We can see what they say. What is the literal meaning of that? The phrase ika kene can be broken down as e, meaning you, okay. Ka, of and to. Uh, all right, so that seems like it just made something up. And then kene, how. So that's completely wrong. Kene means healthy. So a little tradition of how of is how of you or how is it with you in English. Okay, that's 100% wrong. It is are you healthy. All right, so let's try a few more beginner expressions such as how do you say I am hungry. In Bambara, I am hungry is nete sogoma. Wrong. That means I am not in the morning or something like that. How do you say I like peanut sauce? In Bambara, I like peanut sauce can be translated as Ne jem tige dige. Here, tige dige refers to peanut sauce. All right, so that's true. Tige dige does mean, it means the peanut butter, kind of the la pat, the, uh, before it's a sauce, but tige dige does mean something like peanut sauce. But then here, ne jem tige dige just means I, and then we have the French, I like tige dige. So that's wrong. How do you say, I am going to the market? In Bambara, I am going to the market is nebe sugula. Here, sugu refers to the market. Okay, so it did get it right. Sugu does refer to the market, but nebe means I all market at. So I all at market. That's not a grammatical sentence. You would have to say something like nebe ta sugula, right? And we wouldn't want to write it as be, but we'd rather write it as just be to conjugate the ta. All right, so let's just try a few nouns to see how it does with that. So for instance, how do you say uh, man? In Bambara, man is fari. Okay, that's wrong. Fari means spicy or fiery. How do you say woman? In Bambara, woman is muso. All right, so that one's right. What about child? In Bambara, child is ding. All right, so that's correct. How do I pronounce den correctly? 
In Bambara, den is, sim is pronounced similarly to the English word den, as in a lion's den. However, ensure you give emphasis to the E sound, making it a bit elongated, like den. So it seems like it, it does think that it's different from den, which it clearly is. It's not den with a consonant at the end, but rather den. You just nasalize it at the end. But it doesn't quite know how to explain it. How do you say to jump? In Bambara, to jump is soro. All right, that's just 100% wrong. It's kapang. All right, so now let's try to get it to do some more intermediate topics. So if we wanted to ask it about some grammar. So for instance, can you explain to me how to conjugate Bambara verbs in the present tense? All right, so we do have a response here, and it says, Bambara verbs in the present tense are relatively straightforward compared to many Indo-European language. Here's a brief guide. Infinitive form. Most Bambara verbs in their dictionary form start with the prefix si. That's completely wrong. Not true. It starts with ka. Conjugation. The verb stem is used. Okay, completely wrong. It's just wrong because of this. It also said soro means to jump. That's wrong. Personal prefixes are used to indicate the subject of the verb. That's wrong. They're not prefixes. Uh, but we do have some of these are right for pronouns. Ne, i, a. Au, it means you all, not we. Aung means we and not you all, plural. And then ala means God and not they. We have a bunch of nonsense examples for to jump. And then it has some important note that is also wrong. All right, so let's ask it a theoretical question that is very important for new students of Bambara. How do you say to be in Bambara? And I'm going to ask it to keep it short. In Bambara, the concept of to be is not expressed with a single verb as in English. All right, that's totally true. But then they say a bunch of nonsense. Instead, you use la for positional or existential statements like ne la bamako la. I am in bamako. So it would actually be ne be bamako and not ne be bamako la. There's no la that you need after there, and this should be ba, be. However, to be in terms of states or conditions doesn't always have a direct verb equivalent, and the meaning is often created through context. All right, so it just scraped somewhere from the internet that it's possible, but it doesn't actually know anything. All right, let's try doing an intermediate conversation of sorts, the kind of thing that I would do with a private student if we were doing one-on-one -on -one lessons or if you were going through some of the exercises that I have in my online courses and things like that. So for instance, if we said, uh, let's talk about the city of Bamako in Bambara so that I can practice a little bit. Please use simple grammar that I can understand. Sure, Bamako Musola. Bamako is a city. Wrong. This is Bamako Woman On. Bamako Malila. Bamako is in Mali. Almost Bamako Be Malila. Bamako Sugute Tele. Bamako's market is big. This is actually Bamako Sugu isn't sun. Niger Jiri Bamako Lafe. The Niger River flows through Bamako. This is actually the Niger tree Bamako in place of. Would you like more sentences or specific topics related to Bamako? I think that's good. I think it shows that this won't really work, but we can do one more for fun. Bamako Kabon. Hmm. Ikodi. So this literally means Bamako is big. What do you say? Or you say how? Bamako ka bon wa. <laughs> ne te tora inite. Translation, Bamako is good indeed. I'm fine and you. All right, this is wrong. This actually means Bamako is good question. Ne te tora would be like, I don't remain. Inite, so you and isn't. Uh, so this translation is 100% wrong, but it is cute that it's trying to respond in Bambara. Let's have a basic greeting exchange in Bambara. I will start. Ini Sogoma. Mba Ini Kene. All right, so it did get Mba right, but it spelled it wrong, putting the apostrophe in here, but then it said Ini Kene. You and healthy, which would actually be ika kene, but I will just respond back as if I thought it was getting things right. 
Unka kene edu. So I am healthy and you? Nete tora ika karamogo wereu. Translation, I'm fine. How's your family? This actually would be nete tora. Uh, I do not remain or I'm not remaining. Ika karamogo. And oh, this would be you possessive marker teacher others. So and your other teachers. But so no, 100% wrong. Ne togo ko korman. Itogo kodi. So this meaning, my name is Coleman. What's your name? Netogoko chat GPT. So it did get that right. And then it says, Ika dugu lafe. Where do you live? All right. So that's totally wrong. Ika dugu would be your town, la in place of. So that's just a nonsense sentence. But let's respond to them as if it got things right. be Franci. So that means I seated and located in France, meaning I live in France. So it says, Ah, Francis Cabon, Nebe Mali Soro Ayere. Ah, France is nice. I hope to visit Mali one day. This is completely wrong. It says, Francie, France is big. Nebe Mali, I will Mali obtain itself. So I will obtain Mali itself, but not I hope to visit Mali one day. All right, nice try. Nice try. Let's say goodbye. Iniche Barola. So thanks for the chatting. Kanban. Goodbye. Wow. So it did recognize that it was goodbye, but it got the response completely wrong. Iniche tu, which is not a sentence, is like thank you or uh, yeah, it's a greeting. And tu, which does not fit here. And then kantan. So it started to use what looks like would be kanban, but it said kantan. But tang doesn't mean anything. Maybe it means ten here. Maybe it means the word to kick. So thank you for the chat. See you later. At least it knew that I was saying goodbye. All right, so I think that we're getting a sense that it doesn't really work that well, but let's cap things off by at least doing one advanced sentence and seeing what happens. So I'm going to go to a, a news website and then we will see if this news website has any sentences that are useful. So this sentence here from this news article, which means something like, in the, to the mind of Asima Goita, the president, uh, the president Asima Goita, the new money of the BRIC countries is going to uh, make easing enter into Fanchamana into many things. Can you uh, translate this sentence? All right, wow, okay, so we did get a response here. So they say the sentence you provide appears to be Bambara, but the phrasing seems somewhat complex, all right? And what do they say? Breaking it down, Jamna Kuntigi might refer to a period or era. No, 100% wrong. Asima Guita could be a proper name. Correct. Yafuko told said that. All right, that's actually right. Ale Hakila might translate to is in the mind. All right, so in his mind or to his mind. Brikisi is a proper name. That's correct. Jamanaoka Warikura might refer to change in the way nations, countries communicate. 100% wrong. Binanoya do Fanchamana could mean in order to better understand each other. 100% wrong. So their attempted translation, in modern times, Aisima Goita said in the mind of Brikisi, changing the ways nations communicate helps in better understanding. Wrong. Uh, it's essential to recognize this translation might not capture the exact intended message due to complexities in the sentence. All right. So uh, I think we can see that that doesn't work uh, even at the advanced level. All right. So can you learn Bambara with ChatGPT? I it is say. No, you can't. I think that this little test that I did makes it abundantly clear that the model just doesn't know enough about Bambra. There's simply put not enough Bambra data on the internet or it's not been fed enough information to be able to accurately predict these kinds of things like it does for bigger languages like French or English, etc. Yes, it got a few random things right here and there. But at this point, the errors are so flagrant that I wouldn't recommend that anybody use it for Bambara learning of any kind. That said, I'm curious to hear from you all. Have any of you used ChatGPT to learn Bambara or any other language? How did it go? Please let me know down in the comments below. Note, aoniche. Otherwise, thank you. If you like this video, think about giving it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. For those of you that are serious about Bambara, think about checking out my website. There's a free dictionary, language forum, and I've got online courses for Bambara Jula and Maninka. 
If you like this video, but you don't need to learn Bambara, but you wanna help me keep making other videos, then think about becoming a patron. There's a link down in the description below. Otherwise, nka fuli baoye, au kambe.